Hi everyone, so this is the series where we look back at 2017, we're now on to September and of course the bold letters down at the very end of August, I go on to Ball Street to vent my frustration, we also see Lazar and Krull leave the club and we also see Newcastle win the second and third game in a row but the end, end of the month we end up getting beat up Brighton. What is the general feeling amongst Newcastle fans of one probably where, you, one where you think you are, one where you think a uh, team like Newcastle and where, yeah, where you think a team like Newcastle and a club like Newcastle should be? Mm. Well, going back up in the Premier League, I think realistically you've got to be happy with the top 15 and then just stay away from the relegation scrap, don't get involved with that and under Rafa Benitez you think, yeah, we've got a world-class manager, mm. sure the Redmen boys will totally agree with that. Um, Absolutely. I think tonight has really put a, a downer because we're expecting the press to pick this up tomorrow and it'll be all about Rafa Benitez, is he leaving? Did he get his players through the door and all of the talk? That will go on and that will really frustrate Newcastle fans. And I'll be honest with you, it's the first time generally all summer that I've been a little bit worried because the board, the board are absolutely useless twats. They really, really are. They just need to pull the finger out. They've got to realise that they're selling out 52,000 against the likes of Burton Albion last year. And then you're getting this world class manager, Newcastle fans are coming partially because of Rafa Benitez. If Rafa Benitez wasn't there, Newcastle wouldn't be in the Premier League. We're going to begin um, with Ashraf Lazar. Let's start with him, shall we? So, a bit of a strange one, wasn't it, that he came last year, uh, signed a massive five year deal arriving from Palermo. And, you know, we, th we all thought that, yes, Paul Dummett's got a bit of competition because we know the Haidara is always injured. And we thought, right, we've got this attacking left back, we've now got a bit of competition in the Championship. And it just didn't work from it at all. To all the Geordies, I just want to say a massive thank you for your support over the last 11 years. You guys are the foundations of this club. It's been an amazing and unforgettable journey. I arrived at Newcastle as a 17 year old boy and leaving as a man with too many memories to mention. Thank you for making me feel like an adopted Geordie. I'm proud and honoured to be served this great club. You will always be in my heart. Bye for now. Uh, let's get this open. Don't want to rip anything, you know. Okay, right, that looks nice. So, I just want to show you, so this is what it is. Looks alright, doesn't it? So let's have a look, let's get it open, shall we? Let's open the top of it open. So, a nice little um, picture of St. James Park on the back of that. I'll either say 1-0 or 2-1 Swansea, that's what I think. And I think we're going to play really well. One, we've won people absolutely fantastic. What a performance. What a defensive performance by Newcastle. We're going to be talking about them in a little bit in just a second. Um, sure, yeah. uh, they're the games you've got to win. Uh, the aims to stay in the league and uh, massive three points today. Jamal, you got the header. Is it all about getting a run when it's zonal marking? I mean, I said it before the game, you know, they're not zonal and ideally I'd, I'd prefer to go against that. Obviously with Matt Rich's deliveries, you know, he's, he's on a play every time, so it was just down to me to put it in the back of the net and uh, this game I did. Was it easy to pick him out? It's taken me a year <laughs> to, get on the, to get him on the end of one, but um, no, I'm delighted for him. Uh, we had a little bit of pop at each other yesterday in training about and um, delighted to, for the uh, goal today. Mm. It means so much and hopefully we can continue to win games. Was your save off the line from Tammy Abrams equally important as the goal? I mean, yeah, it was, but it's, to be fair, he shouldn't have even been in that position. You know, I got caught ball watching, and for, uh, well, fortunately, I made up for it. So, you know, but overall, great team performance. The lads, you know, dug deep. Same mentality as last uh, the other week against West Ham, and uh, you know, we set a standard now. And we need to keep that. Hey guys, welcome to Sun FM. Recording. I'll keep, keep smiling. Keep smiling. How many seconds of this do you want? We then as Alicia looks at that phone. <laughs> so we've just been in there, got the photos taken, did a little bit of uh, recording. It was really, really good. Um, any thoughts on that, lads and lasses? No, Bree, just it's nice just to get the point out there, you know, for young Bradley and uh, support, support, you know, the family and try and raise as much money as possible. Whether it's your small, big, if please uh, help. Yes, Newcastle are in front. One 0 and it looks, looks like Luke Charman has got that one. Newcastle have gone 2-0 up already. Fantastic start by Newcastle. Brilliant. Newcastle ended the game 2-2. Thoughts, Alicia? Um, game of two halves, really. Quite you know, literally. Yeah, we were in the first half and I were trying to set them. Anybody stood out for you? Um, 
Luke Charman probably. Charman. Unfortunately <laughs> for a prediction, I'd go for a positive 1-0 win. But if you offered me a point now from St. James's Park, I would snap your hand. Up you go. Up you go. What? Top five. Been in it. Yeah. Um, I think you've got to say that performance was really, really good. I was a little bit worried when Shakiri with that threat that he yes. had um, first half when Elliot pushed over because he was cutting in, mm -hmm. and you seen him equalise. I was concerned then yeah. with you because I was like, oh god, yeah, we're gone. It's when you see them cut in, and it's like it just because he's so so, yeah, good. so good. He's absolutely phenomenal, Shakiri. Mm -hmm. And then we are hung on. You know, we got that second goal, a bullet hell from Lascelles. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely fantastic. And what a what a, talk about Lascelles to me because you love him, you love him, don't you? How has Rafa changed things at Newcastle United? Um, well, the difference is our team's not the greatest, but what he is doing, he's got us set up defensively yeah. really well, and that's and that's the difference because our team isn't isn't better than mm -hmm. what it was a couple of years ago with yeah. Paul Duke, Carver, McLaren. But Top five. How does that feel? Unreal. I mean, if you go back to two weeks ago, everyone was down in the dumps. You know, yeah. we'd lost my first two games of the season. It's amazing what one win at home could do against West Ham. You know, then you win against Swansea, mm -hmm. and then you, you know, you, you, you pick it up again today and win by two goals to one against Stoke and went out fifth. Wow. As Matty's ran away, Matty, come back in. What's the matter? I split my head up when I'm watching. Oh, he just split his head up. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, that's nice on camera. Um, do you want us to carry on? Yeah. Go on. Yeah. The main thing is uh, is that the togetherness and um, the work rate, the character. The whole team, the connection with the fans, because the fans they appreciate that. I, I think I put in the uh, program notes that, um, that this is something really important. Players that want to stay, want to fight, want to to defend the black and white shirt. So and uh, they are doing that. And that is uh, really, I think the, pan, the fans they appreciate that. And uh, for us uh, to do this every week and the captain leading by example is uh, something that uh, you have to be really pleased. And you do have to be. I mean, Jamal Lascelles, we made captain of a club like Newcastle. You know the amount of pressure that comes with playing there and captaining that football club. 22. And he does look brilliant, doesn't he? He does. I know Jamal as well from his time at Forest. And, um, you know, he, he, was, he was hungry then and he had the right appetite. He's got the right mentality, you know, for the job at hand. I felt that last year in winning the league, he was instrumental. And I think he's one of those players that the rest of the, the team, they really look up to and kind of know that they can lean on him uh, in times of need. And his last two performances have just been sensational. Fans, my prediction for the game is going to be 2-1 Brighton. I've got to always root for my team. But thank you guys for coming along. Three man. That's why this goes. Yeah, I'm just playing off the line, coming back. Alan went wrong. It's not enough attack and threat. The end product, like Hosselu and Gale, just not enough. Like going forward, there's not enough support. Number, Number 10. Number 10's a major, major issue. We all knew that. And there's no one in that squad that you can push in the number 10. Apart from maybe he's Richie. Yes. Shelby. Quite disappointed because um, I think we lost an opportunity to at least to get the point. Uh, I'm not happy with the goal conceded because I think it's a clear foul. The player that is blocking our players is in movement, so that is a foul. The referee has a very good vision. Great then, so that's September done. There wasn't many games to be fair in September because of the international football coming back as well. But we'll move on to October very shortly.